Hey, I'm Victoriana, and I'm so glad you're here with us today at Kingsgate Online. Wherever you're joining us from, it's so good to be together. We'll be joining our Kingsgate Peterborough campus to worship God together very soon. You know, God is worthy of everything we have to give, and as we worship, He wants you to encounter Him today. So get ready, really hoping you enjoy the service. Let's worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He's worthy of all our praise and all our adoration. If this is your first time, welcome. Let's go. Yeah. Who breaks the power of sin and darkness? Whose love is mighty and so much stronger? The King of glory, the King above all kings. Who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder? Whose life is breathless in awe and wonder? The King of glory, the King above all kings. Take my place, let you bear. 
forever will say glory to God forever. It's a God who weeps, it's a God who bleeds, oh praise the one who will reach for me, hallelujah to the Son of Son.
lift our hands if we're able. Almost every single one of us in this place today. Something so powerful about the lifting of hands to a holy God. We welcome you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Thank you for being amongst us this day. We just say, we love you, Lord. We love you and honor you in this place. Amen. Amen. Well, please, so lovely to see you. Why don't you, yeah, you, why don't you applaud the Lord? Welcome him in this place. A big, big welcome. My name's Karen. I'm one of the leaders here, and it really is my great pleasure to welcome you on this Mother's Day service. Well, before you sit down, why don't you turn around, say hi to a few people while I welcome everybody who is watching online today. It's so great to have you with us. And as always, we hope that you feel at home with us today. Well, it is Mother's Day today. And so every year we love just to take this opportunity as a church family to celebrate all the women in our world and in our lives. And so I would like to invite all of the women here today, and this is for you at home as well, just to stand so that I can spend a few moments just to pray over you. So as all the women stand, men, why don't you celebrate them, welcome them, thank them. Come on, let's keep, let's keep cheering. <laughs> I hope those of you who are at home can sense the love in the room for you as well. So let me pray for you all. Father God, thank you for all the women who are with us here today. We celebrate them as they represent mothers and sisters, daughters, aunties, grandmothers, and friends. Thank you, Lord, that you know each one by name. You love and care for each one of them, and you're interested in every detail of their lives. We pray that they would be honored, loved, and respected in this place. And as we reflect on the diverse journeys of motherhood represented here today in our church family, we ask that you would give all of those who are parenting the gifts of patience, kindness, and wisdom as they meet the challenges of an ever-increasing pressurized society. We pray for the adoptive mothers, for foster mothers, for stepmothers, for mental mothers, and for spiritual mothers among us. Your role is a very holy calling. And I pray that they would know the ways in which they reflect your nurturing heart, Father God. We pray that their influence will plant seeds of faith that grow into a lasting legacy. We extend our heartfelt empathy to those who've endured the pain of losing a child. We stand with them in grief, entrusting them to your comforting arms, Heavenly Father. We also pray for those who've miscarried and for those walking the challenging path of infertility. We ask, Lord, that you would be with them particularly as they face the myriad of emotional and physical trials. We ask, Lord, that they would know that their journey is seen by you. And I pray, Lord, that your grace would be their strength and their comfort. And that as a church family, we would reflect your love and your understanding. Father God, we pray for those who are grieving the loss of their mother. And this is for the men amongst us too. Father, I pray that you would know your comfort 
and that you would strengthen them in what can be an incredibly emotional day today. We bring before you those whose relationship with their mother isn't as strong as it could be, as well as those who are experiencing heartache and separation from their children. Would this be a time of peace, of forgiveness and reconciliation where possible? We pray today for the women of the nations, particularly those who are suffering the devastating and life-altering effects and trauma of war. We think of those who are injured, displaced, oppressed, or widowed, those who have lost their children as a result of conflicts around the world. Holy Spirit, would you draw near as their comforter, their protector, their rescuer, and their provider. Today we celebrate the diverse tapestry of motherhood, acknowledging that each story is a part of your grand design. And we honor all the mothers, seen and unseen, remembered and present. And Lord, we thank you for all the wonderful women in our Kingsgate family who trust steadily in your Holy Spirit. Help and guide them as they seek to honor and put you first place in their lives. May they feel your embrace, Heavenly Father, as the one whose love and strength is the only true source for life's journey. And we pray all of this in the wonderful name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, men, why don't we celebrate the women one more time before they take their seats. Well, now we are going to take a look at church news, which gives a little bit of insight to some of what is coming up in the life of the church over the next few weeks. So please, let's watch this. Imagine how much richer your life would be if you knew at a deeper level what it was to be completely and unconditionally loved. If you were filled with a new sense of hope, peace and freedom. And if you found and fulfilled your true life purpose. Well, starting this Easter and joining with a national campaign, we're running Alive, a series exploring the life-changing encounters people had with the risen Jesus where he met these deep human needs. But it wasn't just then. Because Jesus is risen, he is still changing lives by his spirit, both now and forever. So Alive is an amazing opportunity for us to encounter the risen Jesus and to invite others on the journey with us too. Here's how we can make the most of this season together.
We want to make sure that this season is covered in prayer. So from the 18th to the 22nd of March, we'll be joining together to pray for Alive and its impact. We'll be sharing daily prayer pointers on our prayer mailing list and joining together on Zoom each morning at 7am to pray together. So to join in with this week of prayer, make sure you've subscribed. Following our Easter celebration, we want to invite our guests to join us each Sunday for teaching from great guest speakers who will unpack these amazing encounters. Being in a live group is the best way to journey through the series with others. Groups will be watching the Alive film series, which is made up of five short, really well-produced episodes designed to help us unpack the resurrection of Jesus and its relevance to us today. So if you're not currently in a group, we'd love to encourage you, join an Alive group to really get the most out of this season together. Or perhaps you could host a group, just simply let us know on our website. So whether you're joining a group or hosting a group, who can you invite along? Whether they're part of our church family but not yet in a group, or someone who is exploring faith, this is such a great opportunity to journey in faith and friendship together. Check out Alive, a new book by Dave Smith, to explore the resurrection and its relevance for us today in more detail. You can get your copy at a specially discounted price of £2.50, available on Sundays and through your life group. Kingsgate Kids, you are on this journey too. And as you go through this series and learn how you can be fully alive, there will be games and activities each Sunday as well as activity sheets jam-packed with fun ideas that you can do together as a whole family during the week. And youth and young adults, Alive is for us too. In Kingsgate Youth, we'll be tracking through the Alive Encounters film series together. And young adults, we'll be making the most of the main Alive film series. Can't wait to see you there. Let's believe that as we go through this Alive season, many people are going to experience a life-changing encounter with the risen Jesus. Let's do all we can to make the most of this wonderful opportunity together. Well, hey everyone, let me just add my welcome to church today. It's so great to be with you and a very happy Mother's Day to you. I hope that you have a peaceful day and a joyful day, whatever it is that you are up to. And can you believe that Easter is only a few weeks away? Sunday, the 31st of March, Easter Sunday, an amazing opportunity for for us as a church to celebrate the good news that Jesus is alive, celebrating with Christians all around the world. But, But you know, it isn't just good news for those of us who are Christians, those of us in the church. Actually, this is good news for all. And so that's why we're going to be spending the next couple of weeks in this series just getting inspired and equipped for how we can be the good news but also share the good news to those around us as well. So I want to encourage us, let's let's make the most of this time. We're going to be here gathering Easter Sunday, 31st of March, 10 a.m. And again, we're going to be here, but it's an amazing opportunity to invite others as well to join us, either at that moment or the service is going to be on demand on our YouTube channel. So let's just make the most of this. Let's think about who can we invite. That might be through text, that might be through email, it might be social media, it might be the people that we meet out about. Who can we invite? And and to help you in that, we've got a little section on our website you can head to with just some ideas and resources for us. So let's make the most of this time in the run up to Easter on Easter Sunday, but then also beyond that, I'm so excited for our new Alive season where we're going to be spending just a few more weeks just looking at what does it mean that Jesus is alive and how can I become fully alive and again I just want to say to you if if you are not yet in one of our groups then please do join a group because that's how you're going to get the most out of this series watching the videos together discussing together growing together get hold of a copy of the book but but again who can you bring on the journey with you who can you invite to that and and let's be praying in this time. Monday 
the 18th of March, we're starting a week of prayer just in advance to cover this time and say, God, would your kingdom come? Would your will be done? Would people come to know you? Would people come alive? Would people say yes to our invite? So I want to encourage you, join us in that week of prayer. If you're not yet receiving the prayer updates, then you can sign up for those so, so you don't have to go searching on the website. They'll just come straight into your email inbox. So I'm so excited. It is a good time to be alive. It's a good time to be part of this church family. Well, today we are going to be hearing a special one-off message from Nkuru. And Nkuru and her husband and the family, part of this church based in Peterborough. And um, they do a lot. Um, <laughs> Nkuru is a GP as her day job, but also as well as being part of the teaching team, is part of the, the prayer army. And her and Maiwa, they, they lead a life group as well. So, you know, they love this church family. They don't do these things because they have to. They do it because they love you, whether you're part of this church family or a guest. And, and I know Nkuru today has something that she wants to, to share to, to just help you grow and uplift you and show you something about who you are in God's sight. So what I want to encourage all of us, let's lean in, let's listen, and let's learn together as Nkuru shares. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your very warm welcome. Um, I just want to welcome everyone connected online, people from Kingsgate, Leicester, and Cambridge. Welcome, and happy Mother's Day again to every lady in the house. Happy Mother's Day. You know, I, I just really appreciate every lady in the house, because in every lady, I believe there's the heart of a mother. You know, I was talking to my mom recently and asking her how it was for her again, you know, because she lost her mother when she was just three years old. And I was like, mommy, how did you cope? And she said, you know, my older sisters, my aunts were there for me. So I truly personally celebrate every lady because in you lies a mother at heart. Thank you for all the warmth you bring, all the nurture you bring. Can we just give every lady a round of applause? Amen. Praise God. And so on a day like today, I said, Lord, what do you want to say to your people? And I just believe that in my heart, you know, God just wants to bring a word of comfort to every single one of us today. He just wants to hug you today. He just wants to tell you it's okay. He wants to tell you that everything's going to be all right again. He wants to speak to you like a mother would speak to her baby. You know, he gave me a scripture that anchors everything we're going to be sharing today, and that's taken from Isaiah 66, verse 13. It says, as a mother comforts her child, so will I comfort you, and you will be comforted over Jerusalem. You know, God is saying to us today, look, I know you've already been through a tough year. Things have happened to you this year that you'd never expected. It looks like life has thrown a hardball at you, but today I just want to remind you I love you. I just want to speak kindly to you. I just want to hold you and bring things to peace. I want to let you know I'm going to make all things right again. You know, when a mother gives birth to a child, one of the first things that we do with that baby is we put that baby on the mother's chest and we allow that baby just receive a sense of, warmth and comfort. And you know, what we see is that that baby's temperature and heart rate and, you know, their, their breathing becomes regulated just by that hug, just that warmth. It even stimulates something emotionally, physically and chemically in that mother because of that connection. And God is saying to you today, that's the picture of just what I want to do. I want you to see my heart for you. You know, there's some beautiful scriptures that the Lord has given to us in the Word that just shows us the kind of, the way he thinks about us. And I, I think they're so beautiful. And, and I think the Lord will have us look at those scriptures again because sometimes when we think about him as God and, you know, Father, and, you know, sometimes we forget that he can be so tender, he can be so kind, and he really wants you to see that today because of the things he wants to speak to you. There's a beautiful verse in Psalm chapter 22, verse 9. And the writer there, the psalmist says something. He says, yet you brought me out of my mother's womb, safely from my mother's womb, and you led me to trust you at my mother's breast. Wow, look at this amazing connection. The writer is saying it was in that place of safety, that place of nurture, that place of comfort. That's where I learned and came to understand how you wanted, how you wanted to treat me, how you wanted to relate with me. I figured out that it was in that place of comfort and nurture that I could see your heart for me. That's how I learned to trust you. That's the God that we have. That's the God that we serve. You know, this, this, is, this is the tenderness of the, the Father's heart towards us. 
sometimes we have to take time to, to think about how God thinks of us, to see his heart for us so that we can truly hear him speak. Because you, you, can't, you can't receive comfort from someone you feel threatened by. And God is wanting us to see the tenderness of his heart again. You know, there's another beautiful scripture that just captures the heart of the Father to us. And it was Jesus who was speaking. In Matthew 27, verse 37, he was speaking, Jesus was speaking to the Israelites then. And you know something, when Jesus speaks, he actually speaks God's heart. Because he says, when you see me, you've seen the Father. So he was talking to the people of Israel then, and he said in those words, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you will kill the prophets and stone those who are sent to you. How often I have longed to gather your children together as a hen gathers her cheeks under her wings, but you are not willing. I don't know if you've ever seen a mother hen and her chicks. You know, I, I grew up in a home where we had a lot of chickens around, and usually when you come across a chicken, that chicken just takes off, right? But when that chicken becomes a mother hen, you don't want to cross her path. Because she ever thinks that you're coming for her baby chicks, you're going to be in trouble, and take you from someone who's been chased by a mother hen before. You, you don't want to, you don't want to, you don't want to, she, she forgets who she is, she forgets how tiny she is. She's going to come for you, because you have to go, you're going to have to come through her before you get to her babies. She will charge at you so fiercely, because she's so watchful, so protective, so mindful of her babies. And the Lord is saying, you know what, that's what I, that's, he was speaking to people who hadn't come to him yet. And he's saying, look, that's my heart for you. That's how I see you. That's how I want to gather you under my wings. Do you know something, children of God, you and I, brothers and sisters, that's where we live. That's where we dwell, under his wings. So nothing gets to you that hasn't gone past him. There's nothing happening to you that he doesn't already know about. And that he wants you to see that because he knows that some of us have really gone through tough times this year. Things have happened to some of us that makes us feel like, God, I can't go on. Where were you when this happened? How could this have happened to me? I don't think I can make it through. But he's saying, no, I've got you. You're under my wings. Even better than that, because of Christ now, where even in him, there's a scripture that says that our lives are hidden in Christ and Christ in God. How amazing. What a sense of protection. What a sense of security. Nothing happens to you that hasn't gone past the Father yet. He doesn't let anything come at you that he's not aware of. That's how watchful he is of you. That's how mindful he is of you. Praise God. That's the Father's heart to us. You know, there's some of us that might be here and you're thinking, okay, yes, I, I get that God can be that good, but not to me because you don't know where I've been. You don't know what I've done. You don't understand the kind of life I've lived. But can I just tell you the good news of the Father's heart for you today? God is no longer counting our sins against us. The scriptures tell us in 2 Corinthians uh, 5, 19, for God was in Christ reconciling the whole world to himself, no longer counting man's sins against him. Praise God. And this is the wonderful message of reconciliation. So this means there's nothing that can ever have to stop you from coming to your daddy. Because in Christ, he has given himself, God has given himself the ability to love you freely, not having to deal with any mess. He doesn't see that because all of that was placed on the cross by the blood of his son. So you can see your father really loves you. And even if you still doubt it, the word tells us that God proved his love for us so that even when we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So even at your worst, when you thought you had done everything wrong imaginable, he saw that and things you probably haven't even figured that you were going to do, but he still chose to die for you because that's how much he loves us. That's how much he cares about us. There's nothing, absolutely nothing going to stop him from loving you. You couldn't stop him then, he's not going to stop now. He already loved you and there's nothing you can do about it. His love for you is going to, it's, it's as far, he says he's taking our sins as far as the east is from the west. So can you see there's nothing that God will not give for you. The Bible says, he that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How will he not with him freely give us all things? That's his heart for us today. So now he wants to speak to you. He wants to let you know what he's going to do about the things you've been going through. And he's placed two words of comfort in my heart for you today. As a mother comforts her child, so will I comfort you. There's a word of comfort for every single one of us, a word of comfort for all. This is for every single one here, men, women, boys, girls. God is saying to you today, look, I've seen what you've been through. I know what's happening, and I'm going to make it all right again. 
I'm going to make you smile again. I'm going to take the broken pieces and put them back together again. I'm going to bring light to that situation. I'm going to flood the darkness with light. I'm going to see, make sure that you can see that there's going to be light at the end of the tunnel. I know that it feels like all hope is lost now, but I want you to know I see your pain. I have heard your cries. I'm not a high priest that cannot be touched with the feelings of your infirmities. I've been there and I know what you're going through. I hear you and I see you and I'm going to make it all better again. He says, because I've loved you with an everlasting love. I have not brought you this far to leave you alone. I want you to believe that because that's God's word for us today. He's going to see us through. He's going to take away the shame, take away the pain. He's going to wipe your tears. You know, every single time you cried and you thought, God, where are you? How could this have happened? He said, I saw every tear and they're precious to me. You know, the scripture says he collects our tears in a bottle. So he's very, you know, when a baby cries, when a baby cries and, it, and, and, and that baby's still being nursed, the mother knows, she has to know because she knows mentally, she knows emotionally, she knows physically, even chemically, her body responds. That is the intricate connection between a mother and a child. And God is saying, look, at your mind, I know you, I hear you. I'm there with you, I'm there for you. He says the Lord is close to the brokenhearted and he saves those who are crushed in spirit. He's gonna get you right up again. He's going to mend those wounds. He's going to restore you. He's going to make sure that whatever's happened is going to work out together for your good and for his glory in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, praise God. And you know, as I, Continue to seek the Lord regarding these words, because I know God wanted to just speak words of comfort. He just wanted to hug us today and just speak kindly and, and just let us know that he's got us. He gave me another word, and this was kind of a bit more specific. And I just, I just trust that this word will minister to every single one of us. And, and the Lord was saying to me, this was like on the 12th of February, I woke up to pray at 4 a.m. and I'm just singing to the Lord, praying. And I just heard the Lord speak to me and he says, look, my people are grieving. My people are grieving. So much has happened. I want them to know it's not, not everything happens in my will. I'm good, but I'm able to make this work together for, my, for good and for my glory. And I thought, okay, Lord, I, I, in whatever capacity and in whatever way, I, I, I'll share this. I'll let people know. And I didn't recognize that even for myself, later that day, I was going to need those words of comfort because I then heard of a, a dear loved one who passed on later on that day. And I thought to God, Lord, I, this, this is heavy, Lord. When I thought about her, she was, a, a dear, uh, she was my a local pastor back home in Nigeria. And I just thought of her husband and her family. And, her, and it really felt heavy. I don't know if anybody's ever been in that situation where you feel heavy. You feel burdened by what's happened. But guess what? We have the God of all comfort. And so I came to Alba Father and I said, Father God, we're preparing for this message. Can you like speak words of comfort to me? Because I'm thinking about her husband. I'm thinking about her children. I'm thinking about so many people that are going to be really hurt by this. What can you say to us about this? And God began to speak some words of encouragement that I believe is not just for me, but it's for every single one out there who's been touched by something similar. And God began to remind me of the victory that he won over death. When I would wake up in the morning, he would speak a word, and then he brought me back to the scriptures that speak these words concerning what Christ has done. And if this is for you, please receive these words. First Thessalonians 4, 16, 18. It says, for the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. Can I just let us know that these words are true? These words are valid. We have a glorious end. Look, in Christ, it always gets better. The future is always greater. There's going to be an assured end because we have an assured hope. Nothing, nothing can break us down. There's gonna be more for us at the end. Things are going to work out. God is gonna make us smile again. And you know, I was deeply encouraged because I knew that that which was ahead was better than where we're coming from, praise God. And then, but I said, Lord, I still feel a bit shaken. I don't know if, if you've experienced something that has made you feel like shaking and you're like, 
Okay, so where do we start from to begin to believe again? Where do we start from to begin to go again? Lord, this has happened. How do, I, how do I move on? And then he brought me to this scripture. And I just want to share this with you as well. Because it gave me such a sense of perspective going on. So wherever you are, whether you're grieving something there, you're grieving the loss of a loved one, you're grieving a, a great disappointment, or whatever challenge that you have faced, this is what the Lord says to us today. And he, he, echoed, he, he echoed his words from 1 Corinthians 15, 55. He said, oh, death, where is your victory? Oh, death, where is your sting? Whatever kind of death this is, is it death of a dream? Is it death of a loved one? Speaking of which, I had to draw from these words again because just a few days ago, a member of my Kingsgate family passed on, and I thought, dear Lord, I said, well, you've given us the word, and we're going to go for it. And he says, well, you know what? But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. So wherever it is, he gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And he says, so while we're here now, while we're going through the healing process, while we're going through the journey of life, while we're going through trying to make sense of whatever has happened, this is what he says. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, be immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Don't give up. Hold fast now. Hold tight. Be strong. Don't, 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 don't throw in the towel. Keep your, keep your head up high knowing that everything that you're doing, everything that we're doing still counts for his glory. It still counts for your life and the lives of the people connected to you today. Whatever has happened, don't let it make you lose sight of, the, of your today and tomorrow. Let the past remain there, right? Let those experiences not define your future and your expectations. Dream again. Keep moving because your life counts. Everything you're doing now still counts for his purposes. It still counts for the lives connected to you. Keep living, keep loving, keep moving, keep pressing. Because I see you and it counts. It's going to count. And you know what? At the end of the day, I'm going to make all things beautiful in time. It's going to all work out for good. It's going to all work out for my glory. Knowing that in the Lord, your labor is not in vain. Praise God. So people of God, that's the first thing God wants us to know today. That he's going to make it all right again. He's going to take whatever's happened and mend it. He's going to make those situations that look barren and broken come alive again because he's the one who creates a way in the wilderness. He's the one who puts rivers in the desert. He makes all things beautiful. He's the one who's able to do the impossible. And then he is the one who is your father. So you can take strength in that and be comforted by those words. He's saying all will be well again. And the second thing that God wanted to just speak to our heart, and I believe that this is, a, again, a word for every single one of us. He wanted to bring words of comfort by reassuring us of who we are again, allowing us to receive strength again. The Lord wants to give strength for all by letting us know again who we are. Because it, sounded, it seemed to me like the picture he gave me was like some of us have become so heavy laden by the impact of what life has thrown at us, Right? especially with regards to how we see ourselves. We've, we've forgotten what we even look like truly. When we look at ourselves, we look like there's dirt covered on us. People have said things to us. We've made mistakes, so now we've taken up the form of these things. We've decided that this is our identity. But God wants to say to you again, he wants to say to you and I that no, you, those things do not define you. What defines you is that you're my child. I gave birth to you, and that is the truth about you. It's not, none of your mistakes can change that. Something happened at the cross. Something happened when you received my life. I literally gave birth to you. So don't let the words people have spoken to you define you. Don't let your experiences make you think you're a failure. Don't lose sense of worth or value because your value lies in the fact, in the inherent fact that you're my son, you're my daughter. I gave birth to you. And you're thinking, what do you mean, Lord? Is this, I've heard this since I was little that you gave birth to me. What, how is this possible? Because I, I say this because I, this is my reality. You're looking at a, a girl who grew up with low self-esteem. You're looking at a girl who grew up with strong, severe, intrusive thoughts of self-criticism until I recognize and realize the truth that God gave birth to me. 
So I am his daughter. And that's what God wants to remind you today. He wants to remind you who you are. He wants to remind you of where you've come from. Oh yes, your father and your mother came together and you were formed in your mother's womb, right? And then you came from, but look, he breathed his spirit into you. So you have God, that is what makes you alive. You are a spiritual person. You're a spirit being. And when you make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, he gave your spirit rebirth. He gave you new life. You became one with your father. Your, your inherent essence is consistent with that of the father. You know, the scripture says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, this means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone. A new life has begun. Are you conscious of this? Are you aware of this? James 1.18 says, he chose to give birth to us by giving us his true word. And we out of all creation became his prized possession. So how can you think less of you when the father thinks the world of you? Because you are his prized possession. You are his own child, his offspring. You know, the father is spirit, so he can't say flesh and blood. You can't say we're flesh and blood, but you're spirit to spirit. He knows you. He calls you by name. So he wants you to stand up again. He wants you to have your dreams again. He wants you to clean off the dirt, shake off the dust that the world has put on you, and remember where your value truly lies. You've got your father's DNA. You've got your father's imprint. You've got his spirit. The Bible tells us he has not given us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power, a spirit of love, and of a sound mind. This is who you are. You've got your father's nature. And you know the truth about the matter is the more you recognize this truth, you can draw strength from this. Because as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. And you see, you begin to be transformed by the way that you think, but you've got to know truth about you. And let truth about you supersede whatever anybody else says. Because God's word is actual truth. And truth is what defines you. Not even your mistakes. Not even the things you said about you. So don't speak down over yourself anymore. Don't talk yourself out. Don't exclude yourself because you're the son of a king. You're a daughter of a king. You're royalty. You're born from above. You're born of him. And he wants you to know this again. So get your dreams up again. Believe again because you're here for such a time as this. He has placed you here to live out a life that reflects his glory because you're full of his glory. You're like father, like son, like father, like daughter. You see, this means so much to me because this is my life. That's why I wear this. This is daughter of the king. That's why I write a blog called Diary of God's Daughter because that's who I am. And that's how closely and dearly God wants you to know this truth. This is not a fallacy. This is not poetry. This is reality. These things happen in the spirit. These things are real. He knows you by name. God loves you. God cares about you. He's got you engraved in his palms. So receive strength. Because you know, look, if the father loves you this way, then how can he ever let you go? How can he ever disown you? How can, he, he's committed to you for a lifetime and for eternity. Because that is the relationship you have with God. He is your dad. He is your father. And he's loving and kind to you because he's a good one. He's a good father. You know, I had a very specific word. And please, men, just permit me to just say this for less than a minute. But I think God just wanted to give his daughters a gift on Mother's Day. And this is from Psalm 45, verse 13. And ladies, this is just straight from the Lord's heart to you. And the Lord is saying to you, daughters, the king's daughter is all glorious within. And her clothing is of wrought gold. He's saying, daughters, you are glorious from within. And don't let anything anyone says or anything anyone does make you think otherwise because this is true about you. I love you and you shine brightly and you're gonna keep shining brightly forever in my eyes. So see yourself that way, celebrate yourself because that's how much you mean to me. Praise God. And for every single one of us here, you know, God says something, the scripture says something about our daddy. It says in Psalm 50 verse 2, from Mount Zion, the perfection of beauty, God shines in glorious radiance. So look, this is your father. This is our father, men and women. Our father sh shines forth in glorious radiance. So what then do we say of those who have been created in his image and in his likeness? Those who have been born by him. You shine forth with glorious radiance. You've been created to the praise of his glory. That's you. That's me, that's every single one of us here. There's so much more to you. So don't give up on yourself. 
Don't let go. There's so much he has in stock inside of you. There's so much the world has to see in you. There's so much the next person has to see you live for. So keep shining gloriously. Keep living. Keep loving. Keep learning. Keep growing. Keep being there. Keep bringing your gifts. Keep doing all the things that he's placed in your heart because you matter to him. You are awesome. You are excellent. You are royalty. Praise God. So that's just, that, that was the second thing I felt that God just wanted to really share, to, share with us today, to comfort us by reminding us about who we are. And you know, the, the final scripture that he has for us today is this. And he says in Isaiah 49 verse 15, he says to every single one of us here, because of the kind of commitment I have for you, I want you to be comforted and, uh, by these words and know this reality. He says, never can a mother forget her nursing child can she feel no love for the child she has born? But even if that were possible, I would not forget you. So even if it was possible, whether intentionally or unintentionally, whatever, even if that was possible that, that a child would be forgotten, your heavenly father is saying today, look, this is my commitment to you. I am not about to. I am not ever going to. I am never going to forget you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. I'm with you in this till the end. Till the time I come, till eternity, I've got you covered. I've got you held here. I've got you in my arms. And I'm never gonna let you go. My love for you is for eternity because I've loved you with an everlasting love. Those are the words of comfort the Lord has for us today. He's going to make it all right again because he loves us. He cares for us tenderly. He's going to make it beautiful again in its time. And his commitment to us is forever. So he wants you to smile. He wants you to be encouraged. He wants you to be strengthened. And he wants you to know that he's got you. Can we just rise up to just respond to these words? <clears throat> You know, you've been listening to me, maybe online or you're here, and you've been thinking, you know, I'd really like to receive these words about this God that you speak about, but I don't even know him. And I, I felt the Lord say to me to let you know that how, how, how often, how, how much he has longed to gather you under his wings, like a hen gathers her chicks, how much he has longed. You see, God made every single human being. He knows every single one of us by name. And he desires, he longs to have you come into loving relationship with him. That's why he made us. He made us for relationship. So the Father is saying to you today, you, you don't know me, but I know you. I've been seeking after you. I've been pursuing you. And if you're hearing my voice today, I want you to come. Come, come, because I've been longing for you. I've been longing for you. Look, there's a story of a man whose, whose son went away. And then when he came back, the father saw him and he ran to him. God is running to you. you he wants you to come into his loving embrace today. And know him as a father would know his child. Because he's loved you with an everlasting love. So if you're that person today and you're thinking, I want to come to this father. I want to come to you. You see, the scripture says he, he made a way to make sure you have that relationship with him. He sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die for us, to die and pay the price for all our sins so that nothing will be able to hinder you from having that loving relationship with him. And all you have to do is just say, yes, Jesus. Come to my heart, Lord. I choose to believe that you exist and that you made this price for me. I want to know you as a father knows his child. I want to know your heart. I want to know this love that you have for me. So if that's you today, you can even raise up your hands and say, Lord Jesus, come. Lord God, take me. I want you to take me. I want you to take me in your arms. I want to know you. You can say, Jesus, come into my heart. I make you mine. And if that's you today, let us know. Come let us know that you said yes to him.
can say this prayer and you say, Father God, thank you for the price that you paid. Jesus, thank you for paying the price for my sin. I receive this gift of love. And I make you Lord of my life. Come in and have your way so that I can know your love and I can be embraced by you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise God for every single one of us today. You know, God is your daddy. I just want us to lift our hands to him and just talk to him. Say, Daddy, I'm here. Speak to your father and let him speak kindly and tenderly to you like a mother would to her child, he says. You know where you need to hear him. He knows exactly what to say to you. Say, Daddy, I'm here. Father, I love you. Father, speak to me. I'm just going to pray a prayer for every single one of us here. Heavenly Father, thank you for your love. Thank you that you're a good father. Thank you that you love us with an everlasting love. Thank you that we can always know that you're with us in this journey of life. Thank you that we can always know that you're seeking to make sure it's well with us. Thank you that you make all things beautiful in its time. Thank you that we can always know that you'll put a smile on our face. Thank you that we know we're never alone and you love us so much, Lord. I just pray that every single one of us will know your tenderness, will know how close you are to us. I pray that every single one of us will be able to hear your comforting words to their hearts in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Spirit of God. Thank you for the work you're doing in us. Amen. We're going to just join the band in worship and we're going to celebrate the loving kindness of our Father, the fact that He's a good, good God. He's the mountain that we can run to. He's the fountain that we can drink from. He's the king of our hearts. Can we just join the band in celebrating the Father with this song? Thank you, Jesus.
Wonderful. Well, wasn't that such a great message and time of worship together? And why don't we all not just let these words be something that we we kind of hear and then we go, oh, that was nice. And then we crack on with the rest of our lives. Let's actually make sure that we take time this week to let them sink deep, to, to put them into practice, whatever that looks like for you. And and especially today, if during the service, you decided to say yes to Jesus for the first time, to make him your, your savior, your Lord, your friend, to invite him into your life, you know, I'm just so thrilled for you. We are as a church and we, we want to help root and ground you in your faith, help take next steps with you. You've probably got a lot of questions. You're probably like, oh, I kind of want to know some things and, and ask some people. Well, well we want to be the people that you can ask those questions of. So I do want to encourage you, just head over to the website. We've got a link there that'll put you in touch with some of our team who can then contact you and just help you on this journey of faith. Well, we're really looking forward to being back here again next week as we kick off our new series. But until then, hope that you have a really fantastic time and may you know the love of God surrounding you in everything you do. In Jesus' name. Amen. See you soon.